Yeah, well, whew. so John's going through a divorce, first divorce, and he's having a really rough time with all of the information that the attorneys are requesting from him. Yeah, you're gonna go through that, man. Um, when I went through my divorce, the actual attorney, the first attorney who literally drove himself, he's an older guy, he drove himself to my house. I knew who he was because, he, now here's the thing, I'm gonna give you a little story on this. He did work personally for me in one of my companies, yet he forgot or completely disregarded that. And I had the proof. And so when he came up to my house, I didn't, I thought like, I don't know why he was there. He served me the divorce papers. And I told him, I said, who's the attorney? Because he's a partner. He, I mean, he, he's a pretty well-known criminal defense attorney, but he sort of was a family friend and he decided to take the divorce case completely out of his element, completely out of his league on this because there was, it's, you know, there's nothing criminal about this divorce. Anyhow, he said, I'm, I'm the attorney. I'm taking, I'm taking the lead on this. I'm like, huh? I said, you know, you did work for me in the past. He goes, that doesn't matter. I said, okay. So got my attorney and it went for six months on discovery. Basically, I had to fucking unzip my fly and show them every piece of real estate I had or every piece of real estate I was involved in. And that wasn't good enough. And they wanted, obviously, tax returns. Dude, they, they ran me through the ringer. They jacked up my attorney's bill a lot. And I even had to pay, or it was suggested through discovery that I had to pay a portion of this other attorney, which I fought. And so I, I understand completely where you're coming from. I'm not going to say the attorneys are vultures because they're really, if you think about for divorce, every, everyone says attorneys are vultures and they are. I don't really like many attorneys. They, you know, there's just too many of them, whatever. But you gotta remember divorce attorneys there is a fucking line out the door for people that want to go through a divorce. So they don't need to squeeze every single thing. Their thing is they want to get them through the system as fast as possible because there's just they can't keep up. There's just not enough of them. And this is why you get other attorneys who get who kind of dabble in shit. They happen to go into divorce because it's very lucrative, obviously. And so some of them know what they're doing. They kind of get it. They want to speed this through. Other attorneys just want, like this guy, he wanted blood. He said, you deserve this and you deserve that and all of this. Anyhow, six months comes, I produce the, the receipt he gave me for, I believe it was $8,000 as a retainer and the letters he generated on a lawsuit I did that he personally handled. Sent that to the judge. I obviously in court, you know this. The fucking judges are female. You can't even talk. It, 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 I hate the whole process because they don't even let us talk. They let the attorneys talk. Like we're fucking children. I hate that. Anyhow, she gets the information. They're talking with the mic off. They're talking. She's told this other attorney, the older guy, see me in my office right now walks him into the office, basically says, look it, you cannot represent your client. You were already a previous client of, of Mr. Schoonmaker. You have to resign right now. You cannot do this. He walked in, told my wife at the time and her dad that were there what had happened. And I looked at Dave, my father-in-law, I said, Dave, I told you this would happen. We had to start the process basically over. We used a lot of the information, but we had to start it over with this other attorney who's just as much of a shitbag as the first one, but at least he was actually a divorce attorney. Then the, the process started speeding up where shit actually started happening. He wasn't asking for as much and all this, but the point is, yeah, I guess attorneys have jobs to do too. I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think any attorney 
divorce attorney, I would say, ever woke up as a little kid and says, I want to be a divorce attorney when I grow up. No, you want to be a fireman, you want to be a cop, maybe in the military, you know, you want to do something cool. Not a fucking paper pusher, but they make a shit ton of money because there's a never ending line of it. So I get that you're pissed off that you have to keep producing all this and maybe your attorney you know he has discovery on her as well so you have all this but the whole divorce process i don't you know this is why i'm not a proponent of ever getting married again because it just it, it makes no sense now if you have children sure get married that probably makes some sense to some degree but if you don't have children with somebody and there's no ties what's the point of marriage that's the way i view it now my girlfriend She's never been married. She has two kids. Um, is it a good idea being, uh, you know, a stepdad? No, I've talked about this before. I was a step, I was a step parent in my first relationship. It's never a good idea, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a horrible idea. But she knows the marriage is off the table. It's not going to happen because I'm not going to go through that bullshit again. And so I guess probably one of the things is once you go through this and it's done and it's over with and you start rebuilding your life, man, I would highly recommend if you ever do get married again, get a prenup. Even if you don't have shit, even if you don't have a lot going, you're rebuilding your life, get a prenup. Because then each party knows what they're generally going to get should it turn into a divorce. Uh, and so it, it just makes things a lot easier. And a lot of people say, oh, prenups don't mean anything. You can, get, it, it, they do. Pre, most of the time, 80% of the prenups hold up. Get a good attorney who knows about prenups. Uh, have him or her go through the whole process with both of you. Obviously, your wife or your future wife, if you do get married, needs another attorney to read it. Um, so that they can't say it's under duress or anything like this, but yeah, the whole process of divorce, it, it's long, it's, um, very frustrating, more money just keeps going out to attorneys and legal fees and it's, it's a fucking nightmare. So I, I know what you're going through, brother. I feel for you. Um, you know, just one thing you mentioned, you have kids. Once you do have your kids, don't talk about your ex or your soon to be ex in front of them keep everything light it's your time with the kids don't sit there and, and they're really good at listening on phones too so even if you're on the phone with a buddy or maybe a new girl or your family member don't talk about the divorce don't talk about anything while they're in front of you um, just wait till they're gone um, it's your time with them you know and and the way the courts are even if you're a fantastic father She's got you by the balls for that too. Thankfully, my wife was very, the easiest part of our process was joint custody. We had 50-50. She probably could have gotten more in the way of maybe a 70-30, but she says, no, he's been a very good father. I'm not gonna take you know, anything away from him on that. It was 50-50. The attorney, her, the first attorney tr even argued because her and I talked about it, says, no, you should actually try to get 60, 40, blah, blah, blah. So attorneys are looking out for their best interest. They're looking out for the paycheck. Of course, they're looking out for the interests of their client. That goes without saying, but it is a long, arduous process. I don't recommend anybody who's gonna get, who's even thinking about going through a divorce that's that's not even married yet, who who thinks about like, you know, if I get married, the divorce, don't come at it that way. Get a prenup, understand that divorces can fucking wreck a man's life. I've known men who make very good money, they have to live at home because their maintenance, which used to be called child support, now it's called, uh, I'm sorry, alimony, now it's called maintenance and child support is literally double what they would have been paying if they just lived in the same house to begin with as a married couple. And so these guys are getting wrecked. So I feel you, man. Um, divorce is a fucked up thing. Best thing I can tell you is just don't step on that landmine again. It's just not worth it. 
especially the way the laws are written now. Now, if the laws changed, then maybe more people would get married. Maybe they got to get rid of no-fault divorce because Reagan actually brought no-fault divorce. For all the good Reagan did, that was a fucking horrible thing he did in California. And the reason why he did it is because the courts at the time were getting bogged down. It was so long and you had to have cause. Generally, you had to be separated for a year or maybe it was six months. And then if you couldn't reconcile, then they would grant the divorce and go through the process. So it was a very long process. And so no fault just came up and said, nobody's at fault. She could literally be sucking some dude's fucking cock in front of you. And nope, that's not adultery. It's just no fault. Nobody's at fault. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. And so the divorce rate skyrocketed. It started in California and then basically became national. There's a few states that, like North Carolina, they do have no fault. But if there is infidelity, you can actually um, divorce for that. And then there's more there's punishments and things like this. But no fault, I think, has actually increased the likelihood that women will ask for a divorce. And why do I say women? Well, it's very simple. 80% of all divorces are initiated by women. 90% if they're college educated. So the mere fact that men are the ones that are wrecking their home is fucking nonsense. Women are wrecking their own homes. And then you see these same women who think this grass is greener on the other side. They're the ones who are crying on TikTok and fucking Instagram shorts and all this shit, sobbing like little retards. I miss my husband. I miss what I have. The dating pool out here is horrible. I can't find a good man. I don't understand it. Why does, why do these guys not want to date a single mom? I'm doing everything I can. It's like, I don't, I fucking laugh at every single one of those. It's like, dude, you've done this to yourself. You're literally, you've literally made your own bed. Now line it, don't fucking cry about it. So yeah, man, I, I'm sorry, John, about, about the divorce, it sucks. But all I can do, you know, it will get better, obviously, um, in time and be the best dad you can be. And if you start dating again and you're adamant about not getting married, you need to make that very clear, very often. Hope that helps, brother.